Welcome back. In this video, I'll be talking about how the current version of my text-to-speech module works, as well as talking about plans for the future of it. Um, but we're right now, let's just get started and talking about how it works. Uh, this is the same version that I showcased yesterday in that video, that short clip uh, showcasing this guy here. Uh, I'm not really going to make a pattern of making stupid stuff like this. Uh, this was just something to sort of keep me motivated to work on this project because I was, uh, I don't know, getting getting tired of it. And something stupid like this was enough to keep me keep me working on it. Uh, but let's not look at him too much. He's creepy. I don't like it. Um, but let's go ahead and start by inputting some data. Let's input hello world into our uh, TTS pre storage space. Um, I already have those in there because I did this before for and I forgot to clear it. But whatever. Um, we have in our words array here two objects uh, hello world in the char array format the same format we use in the strings module I'll be making something the interfaces between them um, later but right now this is I have to sort of just input stuff like this uh, it, it words have to be inputted individually and I'll get to that here in a sec uh, let's go ahead and run our processing uh, TTS pro call so text-to-speech processing call Let's go ahead and run that, and then let's do. Uh, let's get the main. This is where it outputs to. Now this outputs into a Q array, and then within that we have a sounds array, and that splits up those characters into phonetics. Now these phonetics are IPA, but written in Sampa. Now IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet. That is the way of writing words in a way where anyone who knows how to read IPA would be able to say that word properly. Um, and SAMPA is a way of writing IPA in ASCII characters, just so you can write it out on a keyboard, or in this case, uh, in Minecraft, without having to do a bunch of Unicode stuff. So, um, basically, it just separates it into a hello, and then a space character right here. This isn't in IPA or SAMPA, this is just my way of... Uh, notating a space, just a, a delay between words, and then we have a uh, world here, and then another space. The space is always at the end of every word. Um, and then here we have resolved 0b. That's just to say that there isn't any timing characters here, and I'll get to what I'm talking about whenever I, uh, uh, what the resolved is about whenever I get to talking about how it actually generates the sounds. Um, but let's go ahead and switch over to the functions. All right, so let's go ahead and start out uh, right here in the, the main folder for the text-to-speech. We have TTS Pro and TTS Speak. We'll talk about this later. Um, but in the processing section, let's just go ahead and start from the top. So the call function, uh, we start by writing the object within our queue value. Uh, this is just so we have it to write into later. And then we go ahead and generate that queue value uh, right here. Now... Uh, I write the the object that we'll be working with, starting out by writing a values phonetics of uh, zero b. Uh, now this is just here, so if the object that we've written or that we're writing in does have phonetics, then this will get overridden. If it doesn't, then this is just there, so this right here will properly return that value. Um, what I mean by having the the phonetics here is we made a dictionary with all known English words, or most English words, uh, and their phonetics in IPA, uh, just so we can have a more accurate text-to-speech for most words. This system is just a sort of guesser, as we call it. It's just to get words that the system doesn't have, or like names or something. Uh, this is just here, so any words that aren't known by that dictionary are properly phoneticized, so the text-to-speech can output it. Uh, so this is just sort of a minor piece of it. We do have a proper dictionary of phonetics that it, uh, it reads off of. So that's all this is for, but this is still currently all I have. I'll interface that system into this later whenever I get to interface in the strings module in this. Um, but uh, then I go ahead and merge from that words array that I was writing into, and then we're removing that value that we're, uh, we're reading right now. Now this right here runs a phonetic generator uh, if there are no phonetics generated currently. Um, and then this runs after that. This just writes those sounds that were generated. Uh, as you can see right here, um, we're writing those generated sounds into the Q.SoundsArray. 
um, and then we're removing those and then we are uh, appending a space character at the end of the sounds array um, just that plus and then we will loop it if there's anything left in that uh, pre words array uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual generating of the phonetics so that's uh, gen fawn now um, we go ahead and set up an object here this is a pretty complicated object we have our output characters right here then we have c1 c2 c3 and c4 uh, these are my reference objects and i'll be showing that what's that for is here in this um, then we have a ph um, which is some data for what characters are going to be written as well as how many characters need to be removed and again I'll talk about that when we talk about this uh, then we go ahead and mark the phonetics as resolved here <clears throat> as well as removing this object that we just wrote uh, after we write the chars out array right here um, into the um, actual chars array so let's go ahead and take a look at this check letters. This is where a lot of the complexity comes in. We go ahead and reset these four values here just in case. And then we write these letters uh, from the word.chars array, the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Or 0, 1, 2, 3, this is just so we can check the first four letters in that char array. And then we go ahead and do generated... Um, we then generate the chars uh, based on the, uh, we generate the phonetics based on the letters that we have. Uh, I have this underscore, underscore sort here because let, let's go ahead and look at the first version. This right here is a um, just an ordered list of all letters or of all the sounds. Um, this is sort of hard to read and the sorted list is even harder to read but let's go ahead and just look at one of these let's look at one of the more complicated ones let's just start down here um, if we have O and I and C1 and C2 we go ahead and say we are removing two characters because we're removing those first two letters and then the sound we're generating is O I um, I'll have what all these SAMP characters, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll link this spreadsheet right here in the description down below. This has everything uh, that you see here. It has all the graphemes, which is what I'm detecting with this right here. These, um, in the WT, these two are the graphemes. Um, some of the more complicated ones, as you can see, the, it's sorted from the least amount of characters so starting with one character all the way down to four characters at the bottom here. I sorted them by length. Um, let's, let me see. If we, uh, this one right here um, is uh, so we have uh, sort of for the word door, this the two O's here would generate the wrong sound if there's an R at the end. So what I'm doing is I'm generating the correct sound, then removing the two O's. Uh, this is just for the et end of a word. Um, as you can see, I have nothing here for these two characters, or for the, the C4. I have these. Uh, this is just so I know that it's at the end, because the C4 uh, is marked as nothing. Uh, a null char, basically. Um, but the, this is the most confusing part of the entire system, is this whole generating part. This just generates the phonetics. And then once we've generated the phonetics... Uh, we remove the two chars. Uh, let me reopen that. I didn't mean to close it just yet. Uh, I remove uh, this many characters. What the CTR value is, I remove that from here. Um, and then I go ahead and transfer, remove those phonetics into the chars out array. Um, this is probably a needless looping function that I can make into one command. I forgot about that tech for a hot minute while making this, so this is a this is just going to be turned into one command later. So in the actual download, it'll probably just be one command, uh, and then we loop it if there are still characters left in the word.chars array. Um, so where are we at here? Yeah, and then um, 
we just write that information we just generated into the thing there and then we do this as I said and then we loop this uh, and that's sort of how I generate the phonetics for the actual speech generation so now let's switch over and look at the speech generation portion so uh, I want to talk about how these sounds are generated but before that let's talk about how it actually sounds currently uh, it's pretty bad because I sort of just recorded the sounds that uh, myself I just recorded on myself and I'm not that great at doing that kind of stuff so I'm gonna try to get a proper voice bank put together for this that sounds half decent as well as adding some other functionality to it that allows for like digraphs and stuff for uh, sounds to merge together instead of them just being uh, each sound split up into their own short clips um, so that's gonna be functionality to add before I put up the official download um, the, the download will be in a GitHub repository in the description. Uh, you can look at that once it's there. Um, I might make a video showcasing the finalized version with new voice banks, um, but I'll have the GitHub repo in the description of this video once that's done. So let's actually really quickly uh, just play a sound so you can hear. And as you can hear, it's really choppy and it really could be better. So we'll... We'll talk about how this uh, works right now. So in the TTS speak functionality area, let's go to the call function. Now we start out by writing stuff from the, um, or we write the current character into the, uh, the current value from the first slot in the sounds array. And then we remove that first array. This is just so I can check what character is in that current array, uh, a current object, I mean or current string? I don't know, the current value, I guess. Um, and then I will run that clip, as well as then I add spaces um, if there is a plus sign. Now, um, I also have a loop right here, which just loops it using the uh, schedule command. This is just so I don't have to have a repeating command block to run this over and over again. It just self-regulates, or self-repeats, I mean. Um, and this right here is a second looping condition that um, writes from the queue. Uh, this last command right here is just to reset the animation. If there's nothing left in either queue, um, that's sort of just a, a extra thing to make it look better so the mouth shape doesn't get stuck at the last sound it made. Um, for that animation but this right here um, just grabs the uh, object from the main queue and then puts it into the current generated queue uh, and then it uh, just runs this function through that and I'll show what the do queue is here in a bit uh, once I get to it but uh, right here um, unless the current character is uh, a spacing character or the actual space character it'll run the do clip function so in do clip uh, this right here is just some extra just a readout so I know that something's happening um, this right here is a stop sound command this is why it's so choppy right now and I'm gonna add some conditions on whether or not to run a stop sound command based on what the current uh, character is and what the previous character is I'll add that logic later um, and then right here is where I have some compatibility for different voice banks already in place. Um, so if the voice bank is Gibbs, which is, this is my voice bank, it'll run my voice bank, uh, player. Uh, this right here is just the animation. Let's actually look at that real quick. It's basically just what the play sound function is, but it just sets a, uh, custom model data on an armor stand. Um, but th that's whatever. Uh, as you can see, we're executing as an entity that has tts.anim.head as its tag, um, and that's just to play the animation on the armor stand. Um, so let's actually go ahead and look at the play sound bit, which is going to be clips slash gibbs, and then we are executing at... Um, and as an ent or at an entity with the tag TTS SRC, so the text-to-speech source, this is where the sound will play from. Um, this is just 
so you can have the the sound in specific locations or whatever um, and then we are running the clip slash Gibbs sounds now there's also Gibbs delay which is to add a delay to it uh, that basically just runs uh, scoreboard player set delay equals uh, and I'll show what this is for here in a sec but this is basically the same exact thing as the sounds but instead of a play sound command it's just a scoreboard value uh, and this is just for the amount of ticks between this sound and when the next sound will start playing and this right here is the naming scheme um, as you can see it's run play sound gibbs dot sheep or ship uh, that is the name of the example as you can see is the name of the file for that sound so the lowercase i is going to be sheep and uppercase i is ship and that's sort of my naming scheme just so um, each sound has its own specific name that is standardized across the entire data pack this is so other voice banks i add in the future have a simple naming scheme that i can reference off of the spreadsheet that i made for this project um, so after that is the Gibbs delay and then right here we go ahead and run add delays so we will go to add delays and we go ahead and uh, prepend an explanation point and then we remove delay one and if the delay score is above one we repeat this until there's no longer anything left in the delay and as I said, this is just so I can um, add delays <laughs> easily to this. Now, the reason I do this is um, the where I was talking about the resolved Boolean earlier, the resolved 0B or 1B um, in the generated output. Um, the, that's so I can either choose to... Uh, add spaces in this or I can input something that ha already has all the spacing characters generated now lastly here is the space character which is just a plus the add space basically just sets the delay score to 5 and then adds the delays in the same way as this uh, so that's pretty much how this whole thing works as I said I want to work on adding new voice banks to this uh, I might be reaching out to a few people to record some, or maybe I'll find some online, and then I'll, I'll link them in the, the repo once it's up. As I said, I'll have the repository, uh, a GitHub repository in the description down below later on. I'll probably make a video uh, with an update on the functionality of this and stuff uh, once I have it interfacing with the strings module and all that. Once all that compatibility is in place, I'll have this up publicly, but for now, this is just an in-development project that I wanted to sort of give an update on. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch y'all next time.